उफ, ये जिद्दी दाग ओएमजी, दिस इज लाइक सफाई ओपी हे फोक्स ये रचना रानडे हेयर एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू येट अनादर इन्फॉर्मेटिव वीडियो बट व्हाई एम आई मेकिंग दिस वीडियो You know, I had done this video, which was about fundamentally strong stock under thousand, and your response was really good. Then I did another video, which was about fundamentally strong stocks under five hundred, and your response was like amazing. And then you know what did I think? Yes, I thought about doing this video on fundamentally strong stock under hundred rupees. So you know my expectation, right? So I would want everyone to share this video with maximum friends. Hit that like button. Oh my God, I'm getting this chance to promote this right at the beginning. But do that. And before I move on with the video, I would really like to thank Janvi and Akanksha for these wonderful comments. I'm really happy to notice that not only these uh, girls are starting their own investing journey, but they are also helping others to get started with their investment journey. Let me tell you the name of the company which we are going to discuss in this video. The name is T N Petro Products Limited. Tamil Nadu Petro Products Limited. Okay, but the moment I use the word petro or petrochemicals, many people feel that maybe they are going to sell petrol, diesel, and something like that. No, that's not the answer. Okay, first we need to understand what do we mean by petro or petrochemical. So, just for your understanding, first understand the definition. Petrochemicals are chemicals derived from petroleum or natural gas so if i were to do a visual representation of that what are petrochemicals these are chemicals which are derived from what either petroleum or natural gas so from this what is derived various petrochemical products like what it could be something like methanol or ethylene it could be propylene butadiene toluene xylene benzene kerosene bas 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 okay benzene kerosene now why are we keeping this on screen because for tn petro Uh, benzene and kerosene are the most important raw materials why how we are going to discuss in the coming parts of the video okay now from these petrochemicals they again derive few other petrochemical products like what they prepare lab that is linear alkyl benzene second one is caustic soda third is chlorine and fourth one is propylene oxide i am sure those who have learned chemistry and have left this subject long back for them it's going to be like oh my god i'm revisiting these names after so many long years so what we are going to do the four key products of the company we are going to discuss in detail basically we are going to try and understand what is the use case of these products where or in which industries are these products used Now let's try and understand the revenue contribution by each of these products. So if you see here, out of these four products, a major revenue contribution is by lab only, right? But we are also going to understand the use cases of all these products in detail in the immediate in in this section only, right? One more point I would want to make: if you check the revenue by geographical region, you can see that there is no exports done by the company. Whatever they are manufacturing is being domestically consumed, right? So let's start with the first product that is LAB linear alkyl benzene. So first understand this linear alkyl benzene is going to be used as a raw material to make what LAS and what is LAS? Linear alkyl benzene sulfonate. Oh my God! But that's okay. We need to understand what is the use case of this LAS. Okay, LAS is used as a surfactant in detergents and cleansing products. Now you might be like, oh my God! Now what is this surfactant? so surfactant in simple words is nothing but an ingredient which is used in detergents to reduce the tension between what uh, so basically it's used to reduce the surface tension surface tension of what maybe a solid and some liquid to reduce the tension pre bumper dag acche hai right so uh, that is what it is mainly used for it can also be used to reduce the surface tension between two liquids a gas and a liquid and so on right in layman's language i can say that to remove stains from clothes las is required las is manufactured from lab and lab is the product manufacture product of this company simple okay now lab also has some significant commercial importance in what now you can easily understand it is used in what laundry liquids dish dishwashing liquids laundry powders household cleansers and major demand comes from what household detergent makers simple sabanat vaparla jata ओके आगे व्हाट इज इट यूज्ड फॉर इट इज यूज्ड आल्सो इन केबल ऑयल्स इट इज यूज्ड फॉर प्रिपरेशन ऑफ इंक सॉल्वेंट्स इन इमल्शन पॉलीमराइजेशन प्रोसेस एंड सो ऑन ओके बट मेन थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर फॉर लैब व्हाट वाज दैट फ्रॉम लैब एलएस इज मेड एलएस इज यूज्ड एज अ सरफैक्टेंट 
to remove stains right fantastic what is the second product second product is caustic soda okay caustic soda is also known as sodium hydroxide now if you ask me what is the use case of this caustic soda main use case is again that it is used as a cleansing agent cleansing agent for what to remove stubborn stains from laundry okay so if you remember stubborn stains means what in advertisements you might have seen ziddi dag or mel that ziddi dag is nothing but what stubborn stains and how is it removed by using caustic soda who makes that are this company makes caustic soda okay any other use cases yes caustic soda is also used to treat hard water it also finds some use cases in industries such as textile pulp and paper aluminium industry and so on one more uh, additional feature or i can say use case uh, of this is that it is also used to make lime uh, so it is also used in preparation of soda lime now soda lime ka what is the important characteristic its characteristic is that it can absorb gases including carbon dioxide so again one more time caustic soda is used in preparation of what soda lime soda lime can absorb gases have you seen movies like uri and you might have seen that whenever some military operations are done they throw some bombs or whatever and from that some hazardous gases are released but still our army men are fit and fine why because the helmets that they wear inside that these things like soda lime is is very much there which absorb the toxic gases right so i hope you have also understood one more use case of caustic soda moving on to their third product which is chlorine chlorine everyone knows it's used as a cleansing agent again i'm sure everyone knows it's used in swimming pools right so out of the first four products of the company first three are somewhere related to cleansing only right moving on to the fourth product it's propylene oxide and propylene oxide is mainly used for derivative products such as propylene glycol and polyol i'm sure sure you might be like rachna is continuously looking at her screen but these names are so heavy for me i have to look at the names right so let's understand the use case of propylene glycol it's mainly used in making foams now i'm sitting on a chair the chair has a foam in your car seat you have a foam whenever you are going to some uh, indoor sporting game okay something like maybe gymnastics or something like that there also on the bar you will have a foam all these foams are used uh, are prepared using what po propylene glycol okay and the second one was polyol that they are making and polyol is basically used uh, to uh, again use case is like they are used for making sugar free sweeteners uh, you might have seen that i mean chewing gums or candies beverages they are artificially sweetened actual sugar is not put and artificial sweeteners will contain something known as polyols oh my god too much uh, things but i hope you have understood all, just have a look at all these four products again and four products out of these first three mainly used in cleansing and fourth one was like propylene glycol and polyol okay now if i were to go back to the main diagram that where we started in that if you remember i said kerosene and benzene let it stay on the screen why because they are the two major raw materials for them now if you have a look at this specific image you can see that out of the total raw material cost consumed which is around 50000 lakhs then you can see that almost 78% of the total raw material cost is contributed only by kerosene and benzene now if i were to compare raw material cost as a percentage to sales also raw material cost is almost 50% of the total sales now why am i getting so excited slash worried because kerosene and benzene is one of their key raw materials for this company kerosene benzene is a petroleum product basically made out of crude oil so now if the crude oil prices go up then their raw material cost is going to go up and which might hamper their profitability now let's do a quick industry analysis of their major product that was lab and if you remember almost 80% of the revenue was being contributed by lab right so lab i'm sure everyone can recall major application it it finds in what detergents and cleansers and all that so major companies like hul jyoti labs are their customers are their clients right now if you think about this what do you feel tn petro is a company which fits into the cyclical type of industry or does it fit into a defensive type of industry so logically answer will be defensive why because irrespective of the overall gdp growth this that 
cleansers, sanitizers, uh, disinfectants, all these are anyways going to be manufactured and used in the country. And in current scenario, I'm sure everyone will be like, yes, it is going to be used, right? Now, LAB, the, as far as the product is concerned, we have to understand how much is the total production capacity of this product in India and who are the major, uh, major competitors or major players who manufacture LAB. So, for that understand India's total capacity of LAB production is 5,50,000 MTPA that is metric ton per annum, 5,50,000. Now, out of this Reliance Industries which is one of their key competitors manufactures or has a capacity basically of 1,80,000 MTPA. Second one is IOC with a, a production capacity of 1,40,000 MTPA. In fact, they recently ramped it up. It, originally, it was 1,20,000. Now, latest is 1,40,000. Now, TN Petro, where do they stand? They are currently at 1,20,000 MTPA, but they have mentioned in their annual report that they are planning to increase it to 1,45,000 MTPA. And once this happens, they will be like the second in the industry. So now if you check Reliance plus TN Petro plus IOC, all three players together account for almost 80% production capacity of LAB. So others are just like scattered players. Now question is, do they have peers only in India or are there any other competitors outside India as well? Answer is yes. So there are certain state owned uh, organizations, uh, something uh, somewhere in Yanbu, Saudi Arabia, just to give as an example, they have a production capacity of 1,20,000 MTPA. Now why did I give this as an example only? Because of course in Saudi Arabia, Crude oil, petroleum products are abundantly available and that is the reason why they might have a cost competitiveness. In simple words, they might be able to manufacture this product as a at a comparatively lower price and this can be as a threat to Indian producers. So, I hope you have understood overall scenario of LAB at the industry level. So let's get started with the fundamental analysis of Tamil Nadu Petro Products Limited. If you see basic points, market capitalization is only 765 crores and that's why it is a small cap, right? If you check out some other important points, something like what is the book value of the company? Book value is 83.2. OMG, book value is 83.2, current price is 85. It means that it's trading at a price to book value of around 1. But then in that case, what has been on an average price to book value. So for that what we can do, we can just go down and here we can also check what is the price to book value. Here if you can see there was a big surge right here and then it has gone down, it, has, it is currently at 1 ka price to book value. But what is this median P2BV? It's somewhere around 0.7, okay. So if we may see that okay ideally median is 0.7, it may go down till here but will it go down for that? We need to do technical analysis and we are going to do that in the next section of the video. So moving ahead with the fundamentals, if you see here, sales growth not bad at 57.7%. Last three years, CAGR at around 13.2% sales growth. Profit growth is also good and last three years, profit growth is also good. So if you see here, they, the company also has, has good free cash flows of 71.7 CR. Pledge percentage is zero, healthy current ratio. So all in all, if you see, no problem till here, right? But here you can see the contingent liability for the company is 98.8 CR. Now, why am I stressing on this contingent liability? I'm going to take you to the quarterly results of the company. The latest net profit of the company is 25 CR. So even if I double that, it's 50 CR. Uh, chalo, last quarter, even if I ignore, let's go to previous quarter. It's 48 crores, right? So 48 crores ka double is almost 96 crores and the contingent liability is 98 crores. So that can be a little bit of question mark. So we can go into the little bit details of the contingent liability. So this is the screenshot from the annual report of the company. It's sales tax, excise duty, la la la. But important out of this is this one, this figure, which is 61.3 CR. And this is something like a cross subsidy charge under group captive scheme and whatever. Even if you don't read into these details, it's okay. But what does the company believe is given in the last line? This is expected to be disposed of in the favor of power producers. In simple words, company believes that this 61 crores ka contingent liability, ideally company will not have to pay. So that will be a good sign for the company in that case, right? So moving ahead, if I were to go to the quarterly results, all in all, you can see that yes, their sales is increasing. 
just March quarter was a shade lower as compared to the December quarter, but operating profit is doing good again. Whatever problems you can see has happened in the last quarter, March quarter. Again, you can see that there is a dip in operating profit margin. Now, why could this be so? If you remember crude oil, crude oil has been going up continuously. And if you are watching the latest news, if you are following my Thursday live streams also, you must be aware of the fact that crude oil prices have been going up continuously because of which their profitability might have seen an impact, right? If you go on to the yearly P&L, yearly P&L is good. Their sales is at an all-time high. Operating profit is also at an all-time high. And so is the profit before tax. Compounded sales growth, uh, profit growth we have talked about. ROE is also good. ROE is last three years average is 21%. Last year it's 26%. But the stock price has taken a hit of almost 23% in the last one year. But everyone knows what has happened with the uh, with the market in the last one year, right? Especially in the last three, four months. So that is the reason why stock has corrected quite a bit. Reserves are good. Borrowings is very less. So in simple words, I can say debt to equity ratio is also very much comfortable. Their operating cash flows are also good in positive and continuously increasing one or two question mark points can be something like the cash conversion cycle which has been continuously increasing since the last few years and more cash conversion cycle is equal to more and more cash is locked in their business for a longer time in fact i also have a separate video for this don't forget to watch this video if you don't know what is a cash conversion cycle if I go to the shareholding pattern, you can see that yes, FII's have been increasing their stake. In fact, if I'm checking June quarter versus March quarter, their holding has almost doubled. And June 21 versus March 21, DIS are almost similar, uh, almost at a similar pace. So I hope all in all, you are clear about what are the fundamentals of this company. So first we are going to do the technical analysis for on a weekly time frame and then we are going to go ahead with a monthly time frame technical analysis. Now question is why not on a daily time frame? Reason is simple. I'm sure everyone, those who are following markets, you know that markets are really volatile right now. On top of that, this stock is a small cap. So can it see huge volatility? Yes. So I'm not looking at this stock from a short term perspective. I'm looking at this stock from a medium to long term perspective, right? So with this in mind, let's start with the technical analysis, right? So first, if I'm, if you see, I've drawn a Fibonacci level here and the retracement from its highs, highs is somewhere around 150 rupees. From there, the retracement at 50% comes to somewhere around 85.25 and if you see here the stock is at this level right now and a nice hammer has been formed so ideally a hammer being formed shows a sign of reversal should this be the only sign which you you should take to initiate a trade answer is no but this is one of the signals of reversal right plus it is at 50 percent which is ideally considered as a solid support if this is broken then the next support is at 61.8 retracement that is 69.65 at 70 rupees so please understand P to BV valuation, the median P was way too lower than this. So this would be a lot more conservative P to BV approach. So technical analysis, if you ask me, this level looks to be a good level. If this is broken, then 70 can be a good level in the medium term. Achha, what about long term? Now in the long term, I try to zoom out. And if you see here, I've drawn this line here, which is about an original resistance, but now acting as a support. How? Let's see this. Somewhere around 17, 18, the stock tried to break this, went down, came down. Then you can see something like a nice U-shaped pattern has been formed here. And this was broken and that too with good volumes. This is like plain price action, right? So price goes up with good volumes. It went up and again, it is retesting the same level. So ideally, I can say that this is a strong support from here. If it is retesting, there can be a potential bounce from this level. But this is on a monthly time frame. So I hope you have understood how the stock can look in the medium to long term. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, but just in case if you don't, didn't understand the last section of the video, which was about technical analysis, it means that you need to upgrade your knowledge about technical analysis. So if you want, you can surely go and check out my course on my website, rachanaranade.com. Link is also there in the i button. And if you want to know more about top two fundamentally strong stocks under 1000, you can click here. If you want to know more about fundamentally strong stocks under 500, you can click here. Till then, take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye.